What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes and this is going to be my comprehensive guide on Ascended Floret. So I'll be going over the details that you need to know about this new currency in Fae and I'll also be suggesting some of the ways at the end of how you can use them. So this guide will pretty much bring you up to the speed of knowing everything about this new premium currency in Fae and if you're having some kind of dilemma of which unit you should be giving this item to then by the end of the video it is going to be much better for you as you'll be having a clear idea. I make a lot of Faye videos so if you do end up enjoying this kind of video then make sure to leave a like and subscribe and with that said let us begin. So Ascended Floret is a new item in Faye and it's probably one of the most rare and premium items that you could give to a unit and this allows you to give another asset or boon to your units on top of their existing boons and this is called an ascended asset. You can actually get one for free the first time you go into the menu of this and the first time you summon an ascended hero you will get a floret and this is pretty much where this item is not pay to win that much because player who got ascended fiorm by sparking will also have one ascended floret and a player who has got eight ascended fiorms is also going to be having just one floret. This means that you can spark Ascended Fiorm for a Floret and that will take you 135 orbs with the Forging Bonds tickets. I don't really think that it's worth summoning just for the Ascended Florets. I think that the hero themselves should be providing you with some kind of unique value with their gameplay and Ascended Fiorm I know does that for many people as a really good far safe tank but I'm just saying this for future because we're going to be getting even more ascended units and this is the only way of getting florets right now which of course incentivizes summoning. Ascended florets can be only used once on a unit and you cannot use it on a stat that they already have a boon in. For example my Mercedes already has plus speed IV so I cannot go with plus speed IV again on her and you will have to choose another stat. If you use it on an unmerged unit for example and you use it on their bane then it will basically cancel out their bane but after the first merge they will have it as a boon or as an ascended asset so to speak. Once you have used your floret on a unit to give them an ascended asset they will have a flower icon beside their name. Ascended florets can actually carry over the merges as well but again this will not double up on the assets like if you merge a plus attack ascended asset into another plus attack unit then it's not going to be able to double down on that and a single unit cannot have more than one ascended asset. For example here we have got a charlotte and this player has used their floret to give her the ascended asset in speed and then they come across a plus attack IV charlotte. So if they merge this kind of charlotte which they have been investing into into the new charlotte that they have just summoned they will actually have the ascended asset carried over so now they will have plus attack as well as the plus speed IV. This is going to be a really rare scenario but if you're merging two units who have both got an ascended asset then the one who's being merged into the existing unit will have their asset lost. So as you can see at the end after merging the dagger who was the recipient of that still had their ascended asset as the priority and you pretty much lost the resistance one so keep that in mind. This is a pretty specific scenario which is going to be useful for many people who are investing into Grey Linets as they are neutral IVs. If you're giving ascended asset to a neutral IV unit then upon their first merge they will skip out on the neutral asset merge bonus for that stat and it will go to their next stat. For example here we can see Summer Leone and how her stats are at plus 1 merge. She gets plus 2 HP, plus 1 attack and plus 2 speed. However if you actually ascend this kind of neutral IV Leone then after their first merge they actually do not get plus 2 speed instead it goes to their defense which is their next stat after speed. It's not the biggest deal but still I'm just explaining the functionality of ascended floret on this kind of neutral IV unit. Ascended heroes like Fiorm can get ascended assets without using any floret so there's absolutely no reason you should not be doing this for an ascended hero. It uses nothing on your part and you can easily get the ascended asset right from the start. Even though we are pretty much giving a unit another boon with this ascended asset, it has absolutely no effect on arena scoring of a unit so it doesn't really boost their BST for Colosseum game modes and ascended assets also do not change the order in which a hero will gain stats upon using their dragon flowers and even if your hero is logged in a team they will still reflect on the changes of their ascended asset. You can only use one floret per hero but if you want to change their ascended asset then you can go to change traits and basically use 100 trait fruits to change their actual asset as well as ascended asset at the same time. As you can see here you will have a different column now for the ascended asset. 
So this is pretty useful if you change your mind later on. Grail units have neutral IVs, so it's a lot more optimal in my opinion to use a Floret on them first and then give them the trade fruits because this allows you to have the option of changing their ascended asset when you're going to be using those trade fruits on them. Pretty much like all of the currencies in Fae, once you have used them on a unit, there's no way of getting them back and the same applies to Florets. No matter if you send your unit home or you turn them into a combat manual, the Floret is never going to be coming back to you and it is easily one of the most premium and rare currencies in the entire game because of how hard it is to get them and right now as of making this video, any player can only have access to two Ascended Florets because Ascended Fearm is the only Ascended hero right now but this will definitely change later on. So you should definitely be spending your Florets wisely so that you can get the most value out of them. And my next section covers the units which in my opinion uh, should not be getting the Florets. And the first pointer is a pretty obvious one. You should not be giving, you know, Florets to random units that you do not really plan on investing into heavily because you're not going to be getting much value out of them if you're not going to be using them straight up. And then in the second pointer, I have flavor of the month OP unit in codes. Now let me explain what I mean. Every month I see people getting hyped up for a unit a lot and that's really good but in my opinion you should not be moved by the hype to the point where you make a decision which you might regret later on and uh, florets are definitely one of those decisions. So this month we have got Ascended Fiorm as pretty much the flavor of the month unit and honestly she's a really strong unit. She doesn't even use the florets. Um, so she's not the point of this discussion, but last month we had Yuri and before that we had Nyx and you know Fallen Edelgard. We have a lot of these units which are basically really popular uh, when they come out and rightfully so because they're pretty strong units, but just because they're strong units does not mean that you're going to be using them long term. So basically don't use your florets impulsively on the flavor of the month unit. Use them for a while and then decide if you want to commit to that or not. Dancers are also the kinds of units which don't really care about their IVs too much. I mean, this is a different case if a favorite of yours ends up being a dancer, but generally, dancers don't really need the IVs or the florets. Pure support units like Flane, for example, don't really need any kind of IVs to function and do their job. Their weapons, their skills do the job itself, so there's really not much they can make use out of it. And units who you do not really plan on using much in future are definitely the ones you should be avoiding giving the florets to. And finally, units that only use primarily one stat in combat don't really make too much use out of this kind of florette because if a unit just relies on their attack for their brave hits, then giving them defense or speed is really not going to be changing their gameplay that much um, or really affecting their matchups that much. So these are in my opinion generally the unit you should avoid giving the florets to. And now for the final section, let's take a look at the units which in my opinion you should be giving your florets to. I'm just going to be going over some of the examples and of course everyone's barracks are different but still we can have some kind of units who fit into this criteria which maybe you could consider giving your florets to if it sounds interesting to you. The first and the big one are your favorites. You should be spoiling your favorites with your premium currency. Most people do that and that's pretty much the point of the game. So implying that a unit is your favorite means that you're going to be using them a lot which means that you're going to be getting value out of your florette and that is pretty much the point of this kind of section. As you saw, I just gave my ascended florette on my main account to my Mercedes because as you all know, Mercedes is one of my favorite characters ever from Fire Emblem. So I really didn't have any kind of second thoughts of committing my florette to Mercedes. You can also use this on units that you use for a lot of different game modes and they're meta relevant. I can think of Brave Hector as an example. I think that he's a really versatile and extremely strong unit that is useful in the in-game content, in arena, in ether raids, offense, defense, both. So he can definitely make use of this and he's a really popular far save unit and this can help him tank matchups with his far save build. Brave Edelgard is an extremely popular unit and really good near save armor unit and usually she likes to have the plus attack IV but you can also go with the defense super boon that she has got as the ascended asset. Units who have got two super boons and their primarily used stats also make really fantastic use of your florets. Some examples of these are going to be legendary pilot, brave Erika and brave Marth. All of them have super boons in their attack and speed so you can have one of them as their IV and ascend the other one. And this way you can have better offensive throughput because a lot of these kinds of units you'll see a pattern they like to have attack and speed boon both because the attack IV helps them one shot enemies and if they're not able to one shot the enemies or if they're facing faster enemies then the plus speed IV definitely helps them double them. 
So these kinds of units where two super boons are going to be a really common recipient of florets. And you can also use this on units who require visible stat checks. For example, Resplendent Kagero has got Kagero's Dart, which checks for the visible attack stat of her against the enemy before the combat. So by giving her the Ascended Asset in the attack stat, she can basically meet the attack check much easily. Now because she's an older unit, she likes to have extra speed and also for the fact that she does not like to get doubled because her weapon only gives her the damage reduction against foe's first attack. So in a sense, you need both speed and attack. Altena is also one of those units who can make great use of Wyvern Flight and Wyvern Flight is a pretty demanding skill because it requires the visible speed stat as well as the visible defense stat. So you can basically go with the two super boons of Altena in both of these stats and make utility of Wyvern Flight much much better on her. You can also do this on someone like Nesala or any kind of flying or cavalry unit who has to make use of Heavy Blade Sacred Seal because they don't have access to Flashing Blade. And in general, it's a bit harder to trigger Heavy Blade because units have crazy high attack stats. Um, and especially for older units like Nesala, it does become a bit hard. And a unit like him definitely requires that to meet the Heavy Blade checks. At the same time, because he's a Gale Force unit, he will like to double, so he also loves to have the Speed IV. You can fit a lot of units in this kind of example where they require some kind of stat for their stat check of their weapon or skill and Ascended Asset in those stats is going to be helping you trigger that skill or weapon a lot more, which definitely gives you the value. There are definitely a lot of free to play units that people use in the arena core because they can score high BST in arena and a lot of times you have to commit with a super boon on them so that they can reach that BST. For example, Anna needs to go with plus speed IV to reach 180 BST for Arena. This is not even her optimal uh, IV in my opinion, so you can basically use the Ascended Asset to give her something like an Attack Asset or Resistance Asset for Dragon Wall, so this could be an option. Ninja Hana is extremely popular and she wants to go with Speed Super Boon for reaching 180 BST. At the same time, she would like to have a bit better damage output, so Ascended Attack Stat is going to be helping her a lot as well. Fire Emblem Heroes is a pretty old game and it's also a game of favorites and for many of us our favorites are old units which were released many years ago and they don't have the highest stats or the shiny weapons or skills so that's why you can give them the Ascended Asset to improve their performance. For example, Sheeta loves to have the attack super boon so that she can do more damage but she requires speed to trigger the flashing blade effect in her weapon refine so it could ascend her speed IV as well. Recently, we have got Julius' weapon refine. It's extremely good. Speedy Julius can be a thing so that he can be a lot more bulky by denying the doubles of the enemies and doubled himself with null follow up. And with this kind of build, you can go with Ascended Attack IV or even Resistance. But honestly, he's not really going to be needing the extra resistance because of his weapon refine. So the attack boon is going to be helping you do more damage. Uh, similar to the Nasala example I gave before, Cordelia is also a really popular merge project. Likes to have Heavy Blade for the Gale Force, so the attack boon is appreciated as well as the speed boon for quad attacking. Legendary units at max investment or high investments are extremely valid unit for any kind of player and you can make use of these kinds of legendary units in so many different game modes. So these kinds of rare units definitely deserve your floret if you have invested heavily into them. Uh, female Grima for example has got a fantastic weapon refine and remix so she can make use of the speed asset and also resistance asset for triggering dragon wall which in my opinion is her best lobby skill. Similar to that, Legend Chrome is a menace as we all know and uh, Speedy Chrome is a really big threat because of how bulky he can be. At the same time, he can love to just one shot units with that 69 attack, so Ascended Asset in attack is helpful as well. Dimitri likes to do a lot of one shots with his true damage, so attack IV is going to be helping you. At the same time, you need the speed for getting his damage reduction from his weapon, so you can have both of these. You can also give this to your mythic units and in my opinion you should be giving these to the combat centric mythic units. Giving this to, again, the support mythic units doesn't really do too much for you because they're not going to be engaging in the combat much. And for most people Regan is going to be their go to astro mythic so she can be a good option. Dogger is similarly in the 6th slot for light season and Freya has become a bit better with safety fence and she can run the trace skill and have a gale force build. She of course loves to have the boon to her attack and speed both. And finally, if you have the rare duo units who score really well in arena at plus and merge, then they make fantastic use of the florets because you're going to be facing similarly high level and powerful units and the extra stats can always help you in arena. 
So I hope those examples can help you make your decision on which unit you should be using your Florette on. If you don't have any unit in your barracks who you would like to give this Florette to, then of course, the option is to just save because Florettes are extremely rare and premium and I don't know how much time it is gonna take us to even reach the double digits for Florettes. So right now, we have them at very limited quantity. So I hope this video helped to bring you up to the speed with the new currency in Faye. And uh, if you enjoyed, then make sure to share this video with your friends who are wondering what these Ascended Florettes are and the best uses of them. And if you enjoyed the video, then make sure to leave a like and a comment. Helps me tremendously. And if you really, really enjoyed, you can always support me directly by using Super Thanks or by becoming a YouTube member down below. And for more fake guides, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes show videos as many times as the amount of florets we're going to be having by the end of this year. So that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.